that's a tough question. Uh, Dakota is Dakota. I mean, he uh, he's a hard worker. Uh, you always know where you stand with him. He'll tell you what's on his mind. You know, Dakota, he was always up for something that was uh, different than what everybody else was doing. Nothing has ever surprised me with Dakota. He was always one of these people that would, um, he loved opportunities. He loved to take a risk, I guess. He's the type of kid that every parent would want to raise. That, that's, that's him. He, when he does something, he goes all out. Dakota is a very outgoing person. Um, he's very sarcastic, loves challenges, and crazy. Whenever he would put his mind to something, he was going to do the best he could be, and you know, he would be the best at it. He always would dive head first into things and think later. He always thought of, um, how can I fix this? How can I um, take care of this situation? And it was always without regards to himself. He's, he, he's such a well-rounded individual, uh, a person with a lot of passion for whatever he was involved in. If you tell him to do something, you don't have to call back and check to make sure it was done. If you want a job done and done right, you send the code out there and he'll take care of it. We were going in to do a key leader engagement to go in. Uh, the the Ganjigal people wanted to renounce themselves, uh, come back and start supporting the government instead of the Taliban, which was a huge deal because this has been a problem village for a long time. And um, so, you know, we were going in to try to see what we could help them out, you know, help them do. And um, they had left me back at the trucks with uh, Staff Sergeant Rodriguez Chavez. And uh, then they were going to move in on foot into the village and, and conduct the key leader engagement and come back out. That was the plan. Well, when they got in there, they started getting hit. Um, it, was, it was a pretty effective fire. And uh, after a little while, me and Staff Sergeant Rodriguez Chavez made the, made the decision that we needed to go in. So uh, we requested a few times, and we were denied to come in. And then finally, we, just, you know, we, we knew what we had to do, and we, we decided we were just going to go in on our own. So we did, we drove the truck in with Staff Sergeant Valdez overwatching us uh, from an uh, objective, or an overwatch position. And uh, he got us down the road and told us what was going on, what was ahead and this and that. And uh, you know, when we got in there, uh, we made four or five trips recovering bodies out with, uh, linked up about the third trip with um, Captain Swenson and uh, Captain Fabio. And then we, we linked up with them and my interpreter was with us and we kept, just making trips until we got the bodies out, and we could, then we recovered the the Marines and the the the, uh, the corpsmen, and took them back to base. So it's more than just honor or you know an obligation. You know, it's just it's just how it's human nature. You know, it's uh, it, like I said, it's your it's your family, your brothers, your Marines. You know, that's that's what you do for for a brother. You know, it's like it's like I told Staff Sergeant Rodriguez Chavez. You know, we we either we're going to either go in there or we're going to die trying. You know, and uh, that's how it is. You know, it's your brothers in there. Well, do you, do you call every other Marine uh, or soldier or uh, anyone who's serving the country a hero? A lot of people do. Well, then you can call me a hero. But if you're not going to call them a hero for the same reason you're going to call me a hero, then don't, don't do it. I, you know, I get, I get told, you know, it's not, I get told, well, you know, there's, there's certain expectations that you have to live up to. Well, you know, I, I was the same, I'm, I'm going to be the same person now that I was before. You know, I'm not going to change for anything. Whenever you're the one in charge of Marines, and you're, or you were, you know, you're, and when you're at the bottom, you're not in charge of anyone. You're, you're only responsible for yourself. And then I came back, and I had a sniper team of five guys under me. And uh, you know, I think that's what makes you push on. You don't ever want to go into combat and one of them die, and, and, and want to have to go home at night and sleep, wondering if you, you could have done something different to train them to make them better 
at what they did, and that's uh, that was my motivation to every day know know my Marines and uh, and make a difference. And then on with that, you know, you, you have to set the example. You can't tell a Marine to do something, then you're not doing it. You know, it's it, you just can't do that. You know, uh, I think as far as making that command decision, uh, I have to give that that credit back to my sniper training. You know, and a sniper. You're, you're the battalion commander's asset, you know, and uh, and we're taught in sniper school. And uh, you know, my, my sniper instructor, Michael Skinner, he, uh, you know, he, he always stressed on us that it doesn't matter. You're, you're, if you know what you're talking about, and you, you know, you know what you're doing. He's like, it doesn't matter what rank they are. You, you, you do what you know is right. And uh, you know, that day I, I knew it was right that we needed to get in there, and they needed that that support. They needed that truck in there with that 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 heavy gun, and. Uh, you know, that's what it goes back to is knowing what's right and doing it.